Have you ever had difficulties getting up in the morning? Difficulties with sleep. Either you are sleeping too much or you're not sleeping enough. Or you had an unintentional weight loss or weight gain or fatigue or loss of energy. Diminished ability to think or to concentrate or in your ability to make decisions. You can experience sadness or loss of interest in things that you commonly like or enjoy doing or even thinking of hurting yourself or someone else. So have some of the symptoms that he would just described, um, have they been impacting your life in different areas like at work, at school, or your personal life? Sometimes these symptoms can impact our productivity and the way that we feel about ourselves um, if we're not feeling like we're being productive. So if you're wondering how you can attempt to be more productive despite some of these symptoms, keep watching. Hey, bonjour, I'm Hugo and I help busy professionals be more productive and get back in control of their own time. And I'm Dr. Chelly and I help people get unstuck and take mindful, committed actions towards their life-altering goals. Today, we're going to talk about a mental health condition that is very common to many of us, major depression. We'll discuss about some symptoms and how it impacts our productivity and what we can do about it. The information presented in this video today is for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your mental health professional or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have about your symptoms or condition. If you are having thoughts about hurting yourself or someone else, call 911 go to the nearest emergency room hospital or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Now that we gave you our disclaimer for this video, this important disclaimer, mm -hmm. uh, if you like this video, if you like this content, just like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And don't forget to uh, ring the bell for getting all the notifications every time I upload new content. So according to the National Institute for Mental Health, major depression is one of the most common and disabling conditions worldwide. Uh, major depression doesn't care how old you are, where you're from, your socioeconomic status, your level of education, it impacts everybody, right? And many of us are gonna go through a major depressive episode um, at some point in our lives because life is hard and there's a lot of things that happen. And when we go through that, that affects our productivity, unfortunately. And when our productivity is affected, then that makes us feel worse about ourselves. And so we start going down this downward spiral. So if you are experiencing some symptoms, um, Again, there's professional help, but today we're here to talk about um, just some of the things that we can do to um, navigate those symptoms. This condition affects about 17.3 million individuals in the United States, which is about 7%, 7.1% here in the US. And major depression can be classified in mild, moderate, or severe categories. And uh, what we're talking about today is more for the mild folks that don't meet necessarily clinical depression, but they may be experiencing some symptoms that are getting in the way of um, being productive in our daily lives. So talking about depression can be a little bit hard. So what we're going to try and do today is we're going to try and keep it a little lighthearted. You know, this topic is, is very serious. You know, it's something that happens to everybody, so we want to normalize it for everybody. So you may be thinking, okay, I don't know if I have depression or I don't know if I may have some of these symptoms. So let's go through what are some of the symptoms. So one of the first two symptoms is that we have depressed mood uh, most of the day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, and the other critical piece is that we lose interest in the things that we normally enjoy doing. So for example, if you like to go and exercise or if you like to go dancing or socializing with people or even gardening, and if you suddenly don't really feel like doing that, you've lost interest in that, 
then that may be an indication that something may be going on. Some other symptoms can be weight loss or weight gains or just changes in appetite or insomnia or hypersomnia. Mm -hmm. Which simply means you don't get enough sleep or you're sleeping too much, more than normal. Yeah. Another symptom may be that you may be feeling very agitated, like you can't say st stay still, or you may be feeling a little lethargic, like you're moving too slow, like sloth-like is how I like to describe it. Or maybe you're feeling tired and um, fatigue or loss of energy. Or some symptoms can also be feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt about something or also diminished ability to concentrate or your ability to take decisions or you know you may even have some thoughts about hurting yourself or somebody else and just know that all of these symptoms are pretty common and some of them can be from very mild to more severe. So if you are experiencing any of the symptoms that we met that we mentioned just remember to seek professional help. For some of you the symptoms might not be severe and you just want to know how to jumpstart so that you can actually get going. So with behavioral activation what we're doing is we're activating your behavior and like I mentioned this one action leads to another action which leads to another action and suddenly you start rolling. So for example exercise right many of us struggle with exercise so what we do first is we lay our shoes next to the door right or our workout clothes mm -hmm. and so that's the first thing i'm putting a visual cue that i'm going to exercise so i'm going to put that because i know that exercise is going to help me feel better and be more productive mm -hmm. so we we did lay down the shoes and we put on the clothes and then we drive to the gym or wherever you go exercise and then when you go to that class let's say you're going to the class exercise like yoga or you know whatnot then that releases chemicals in your brain that tells your brain hey this feels good so then you start rolling and suddenly you're back into the habit of, uh, of you know exercise of however many times you go a week so basically it's what is the smallest action i can take that will get me closer to mm -hmm. do what i need to do right. to feel better Right, regardless of how I feel or what I'm thinking. So one of the frameworks for behavioral activation that is really helpful is the acronym GRAPES. And GRAPES is a great tool that can help you get started. The first one is G for gentle to self. And what this means is that we treat ourselves with kindness. So we start to be more self-compassionate. So the compassion that I would have for Hugo is the same compassion that I would have for myself, but that's really hard to do sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when we don't feel so great. Um, but just practicing self-compassion, having patience with ourselves, um, that's a really great tool where we can start. R stands for relaxation. What is something that you like to do that relaxes you, whether it's going to get a massage or going to the sauna, jacuzzi, whatever. It's, um, it's all about self-care and to, um, to start to put away all the things that can bring stress to you and just try to get rid of that and try to relax. And that can be also sports, some relaxive sport that you do, practice yoga, meditation, all these things. Mm -hmm. You know your patterns and you know what relaxes you. And in the other video, the mindfulness video, we also talked about one minute mindfulness. So self-care doesn't have to be this elaborate thing that I, that I do. It could just be sitting in my chair for one minute and just closing my eyes and noticing what I'm experiencing or what's around me. Mm -hmm. A is for accomplishments. So something that helps us um, get moving, jump starting, is uh, I'm a checklist person. So I love to check things off my list. So if I can check something off the list, that is my reward to keep going. Um, another strategy to use is using the Pomodoro technique, which I know you've done a video on that. Yeah. And actually you did one where you could work with your Yeah, yeah. We can, you can do a full Pomodoro for two hours with me. Uh, that's a way to be accountability partners. And that's kind of a reward when you finish all these, mm -hmm. uh, all these uh, Pomodoro sessions. Uh, you have this sense of accomplishment at the end, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's a great... 
uh, tool or technique to use to help you feel more productive? P stands for pleasure. It basically do some things that you like doing, that you enjoy doing, that you feel pleasure doing. That's really important to, to have fun. Mm -hmm. So when we first started talking in this video, we talked about how one of the symptoms of depression is that we stop doing those things that we enjoy doing. And so when you when somebody asks you, well, what do you like to do? Well, I, I used to like to do X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. Those are the very things to do. Um, and just starts very small. E is for exercise. So exercise can look so different for many different people. So traditionally speaking, exercise in our culture in the US is about going to the gym, right? But maybe your finances aren't there to go to the gym or maybe it's your schedule doesn't allow for that. Um, so exercise can be as simple as taking your dog for a walk to going to a yoga class, a yoga class to going dancing. I know I like to go salsa and bachata dancing, so that's oh. fun. <laughs> uh, so what is exercise for you? And also not only physically, but for some people, it's also mental exercise. So for example, um, doing crossword puzzles or word searches or Sudoku, that can also exercise your mind. So be creative, think outside of the box. What would be exercise for you? Maybe it's going on a hike. I don't know. And the last letter is S for socialize. Uh, get together with a group of people one-on-one, -on -one, but with people that are doing good to you. You know, you're the average of the five closest person that's around you. Mm -hmm. So if you're surrounding yourself, if you are socializing with people that are um, that are aligned with where you want to be and uh, all these things that we talked about, uh, that relax, uh, that relax you, that are gentle to you, um, that um, you do activities with that gives you pleasure, that you can do combos, right? Mm -hmm. So that's important. It can be one-on-one -on -one or with a group. So there you have it. Grapes is a simple tool that you can use to help jumpstart you into your productivity. And remember, if some of your symptoms are really getting in the way and you're thinking maybe this isn't too normal or this is taking you longer, um, than, than what I thought, they're affecting me a little bit too much, then make sure to go seek professional help. So go to your primary care doctor, go to a, a therapist, a psychologist, um, get some professional help. You know, it's not that, it's not that scary. All you're going to do is you're going to do an assessment and get you the help that you may need. Um, and if, if, um, you're looking for resources, you can go to 211. Um, and usually, I think that program is nationwide. So you go to 211 and it's the, the like information for social services. Or you can also go to Psychology Today. That's a great resource where you can search by your insurance, your providers, um, different things that you might be going through. Um, so it's a really great resource. Thank you so much, Dr. Chelly, for this, for this really great framework grapes uh, I've never heard of it so how uh, can people find you sure so you can find me on social media on Instagram or Facebook at ganas and go or you can also look me up on my website and LinkedIn don't forget to subscribe to the channel right here you can watch some cool videos right here or you can access the playlist of productivity and psychology with Dr. Chelly. We start having a few videos here yeah. and that's pretty oh. cool. Thank you guys. Merci. Au revoir. Adios.